Let's see what happens if I turn it up. Big difference in voltage. Oh, she doesn't pop. No, it's in the Why? Come on. Maybe it's gotta be unlocked? That was pretty quick. Hey everyone, today at the shop, I'm gonna be playing around with the Sony XAV9000ES. This is part of Sony's premier product in their ES line. It's got the 6.75 inch touchscreen display, five volt preamp, three year warranty, 14 band parametric EQ, wireless Apple CarPlay Android Auto with a nice HD high resolution display, lots of bells and whistles. Now this is a head unit that I've decided we're gonna actually put in my Jeep, my 2014 Wrangler JK. My Kenwood DMX 7704S is a little old, a little tired. I could definitely use better quality. And July is my birthday month, so what better time to upgrade the head unit than as a birthday present to myself? And John so lovingly offered to install it for me. That'll be in another video, but today I wanted to get it wired up on a test bench and play around with the oscilloscope. Wanted to see, you know, is this really five volts? Is it clean all the way to max volume? What type of output does the internal amplifier have? At what point will that clip? And what type of settings might I change in the EQ that could affect that signal output on the preamp? All sorts of stuff I'm gonna be playing around with just so I know the limitations of this radio, not only for my own vehicle, but for when we install it in other clients' vehicles. And for when you install it in your own, it's helpful to know what those parameters are. So if that sounds like fun to you, come along, check this out with me, and we'll see what it can do. All right, let's power this baby up and see what it's capable of. I've got my USB connected, so let's just go into the menu real quick. I've got the EQ off, everything is flat. Balance fader is centered, subwoofer level we've got at zero. We'll keep it there for now. Time correction I have off. Vinyl processor, that's kind of a neat feature. I think it works for some songs, but not for all songs. Can give you some better feedback about that once I actually have this installed in my Jeep and get to know it. Crossovers off for front, rear. Oh, interesting, subwoofer is on. Can I turn that off? There we go. Have all of our crossovers off. We're not using the parametric EQ, set for regular front and rear output. And I think that's it in the advanced options. So let's select my USB input, which I just have test tones loaded onto. And let's power up the scope and see if this baby is actually five volts. We'll see how clean it is, up to what volume, and that'll give me a good idea of its capabilities when it's actually installed in the car. Default volume was 15 or 16 when I first powered it up. Looks pretty clean. You really don't get into the higher voltage till you get into that last bit of the volume though. But it's there, look at that. 5.27 and clean all the way up. And that is on the front pre-out. Let's try the rear. Assuming it's gonna be the same. These are gold-plated RCAs too, which is kind of nice. Front, rear. Yeah, same thing it looks like. 5.25 all the way up. That's pretty freaking awesome. Very nice. And again, that's with everything flat. Let's see what the subwoofer is like. That's one of the things I'm curious about because with Kenwood, I feel like they always give you a little bit more on the sub, which I kind of like that because I know I'm not going to go past 30 on my old DMX 7704S, but I don't need to to get that kick, that voltage that I want. So let's see how the Sony compares if they give you the same voltage on all of their channels. We're going to switch the test tone and switch the pre out. So now we are on the 40 hertz test tone on the sub. I didn't even change the volume. The volume's still at 50 and it's still clean all the way up, but it's not any difference. It's, I mean, it's 5.31 and I think we had 5.25 on the last one on the, on the rear pre-out. So you're getting five volts across the board, but it's clean all the way at that max volume. And Victoria and I noticed that, that the ES that we have on display, the 9500 ES that we have on display, that is the best sounding head unit that we have on our board at the moment. And that's the one that we like to use to play whatever clients want to listen to, whether it's speakers, amplifier, or subwoofer. That 9500 ES sounds awesome, which is why I wanted to put the 9000 ES in the Jeep. 
I was definitely due for an upgrade. That head unit I have is seven years old and I wanted something with a much cleaner preamp. And I, originally I was gonna do like the 958XR, but after hearing the 9500ES all day, it kind of convinced me to go ahead and try this model. I'm not a huge fan of the floating screens in, in a vehicle like mine, like the JK Wrangler. I'm excited about this. Plus it has that high definition display. This is gonna be similar to the Kenwood 958XR where it's got the 1280 by 720 res. It's like 2.7 million pixels for the saturation. And I think that's gonna work out well when I have the top open and bright sun and bright glare conditions. And that's always been a kind of, I guess, not really a complaint, but like a weakness that I've noticed on like the 4,000 and the 6,000. They're fantastic value, clients love them. I never get any complaints about the display from clients. You know, they see it in person before they buy it, but there are other models that will give you a much high resolution display, but you have to pay for it. You definitely have to pay for it, whether you're going with a high resolution Kenwood or high resolution Alpine, you have to spend the extra money. This is at that 799 price point, but I do think it's worth it. One thing I am concerned about is the wireless CarPlay because it's wireless only. And that's something that sometimes gives me problems with the 9500 9, ES on display, but usually it's because I'm walking away from the showroom, I'm going up to a customer's car, I'm going to the shop, I'm using my phone for something else, and then I have trouble getting it reconnected or once it disconnects. But if you power it up, at the same, you know, as you're getting into the car and you make that connection on startup, unless you're hopping out of your vehicle while it's running to go grab coffee or something somewhere, I don't think it's gonna be an issue for it to reconnect. We'll find out. And once I get this in the Jeep, we'll find out and see how that works. All right, so let's see what the internal amplifier is like on this guy. Actually, before I do that, I have the sub level at zero, right? Let's see what happens if I turn it up. All right, okay, so as soon as I do one notch up, we have clipping. But again, I'm not the type of person that listens to it max volume. So if I go all the way up to plus 10, what is my max volume on this head unit? Max safe volume. So if I leave my sub level at plus 10, 39 is clean at 4.71, 40 is clean at 4.28. So if you want to keep your sub level at plus 10 to get that kick at a lower volume, plan on volume 40 being your max safe volume level. And then what kind of voltage are we getting on the front and rear at that output level? Change the track. All right, so let me go to the front. So at volume 40, big difference in voltage, 1.66. I'm gonna have to play with that when it's in the car and see what sounds best, but at least I know that if I really want that voltage on my subwoofer channel at a lower volume, 40 is gonna be my max safe level if I have it at plus 10. All right, I'm gonna go back to the sub level because that's the one I'm always worried about people damaging. People always want more bass. And one of the tricks that we do just to get the right balance for people is we often lower the gains on the front and rear of our amplifier so we can get the blend that they want without worrying about damaging any equipment. Back on 40 hertz, we have our sub at plus 10. Let's see what other EQ options are in here that might affect this. Yeah, so if you bump up the bass on the EQ, obviously that's gonna change that. Now we have our safe volume at 38. Yeah, maybe 39. I don't think my eyes are as good as they used to be. I think 38. The pop. So if you bump up these frequencies at all, yeah, if you jack up that bass and you have your sub at plus 10, that's going to drop you all the way down to 32. That's a that's significant difference. So this is where I'm always telling clients to leave the EQ flat and just use the bass knob that we give them to adjust the sub level. Because if you start going in here and you jack up EQ, jack up your sub level, that changes all of the work that we did in the tuning process and puts you at risk of having a clip signal, which could then damage your equipment. Safest bet is to leave that sub level at zero. Oh, I gotta plug this in. I'm gonna switch to the speaker output to see at what point the internal amp in this radio starts to clip. Maybe you're gonna build your system in phases and you're gonna power your speakers off the head unit for now. And in that case, it's gonna be helpful to know at what point the signal on your speaker wires actually starts to clip.
let's change the track. And one thing I want to point out real quick, every time I start this thing up and I want to get to USB, it drives me bonkers how small <laughs> that little arrow is. I keep going to hit it and I end up hitting settings instead. We'll see how that is in practice in the car. I don't know how often I'll get into that. Let's change this track. Let's see what happens as I turn the volume up on here. And this goes up to 50, so I don't know, I'm thinking around 35. You'll probably see it start to clip. Well, maybe you'll be wrong. I don't know, we're still clean. Still clean. That's pretty good at eight volts there. At, uh, what was that, 37? Okay. Getting a little fuzzy in the tops and the bottoms there. Yep, there we go. Okay, so 39 is definite. 38 is questionable. 37 looks good to me. What is the math on that? Let's see. Eight squared divided by four, so 64 divided by four. My brain is terrible math. That's only 16 watts RMS per channel. Huh. I expected more than that, but good to know we're getting 16 watts RMS of clean power at 37 on the internal amplifier with the one kilohertz test tone. If I change that to 40 hertz, does that change our response? Yes. On the lower bass frequencies, we're gonna start clipping a little bit lower. 37 is gonna start clipping, so 36 is probably a safe bet for the internal amplifier. And again, I have the EQ flat. If I go in there and I start boosting the bass, that's gonna change the response and that safe max volume. So just keep all that in mind. If I go back in to settings, Oh, sh it's on pop. Mother f Let's redo that. EQ off. Well, we're on 40 hertz. Let's see. Yeah, no, it's 37, even with everything flat. 8.39 volts. That's more like 17 and a half. I had to get the calculator for that. Math is not my strong point. So 8.39 volts squared divided by four ohm resistance, we've got 17.59 watts RMS. So max safe volume looks like it's gonna be 37. Go back to the one kilohertz test tone. Yeah, same thing. So that's good to know. I'm gonna get my phone powered up just so you guys can see what this display looks like. A new device. Go into the Bluetooth settings of my phone. There it is, 9,000 pair. Here, allow, use CarPlay. I'm gonna take this uh, down. That's a pretty nice display. That's a big step up from my old DMX 7704S. That's gonna look really nice in my Jeep. It's gonna be a lot easier to see for sure when I have the top open. Let's see how responsive it is. Shouldn't be any different than most of the, most of the Sony screens are really responsive. Let's just look at everything. Yeah. I think I'm gonna be happy with this. As long as the wireless isn't laggy, I will be happy. That's one thing I'm concerned about. In fact, I like to download music on my phone just because I don't like streaming when there's like little hiccups. I don't know, we just have crappy coverage in this area, even though we're in a really popular location, Danbury, Brookfields, Connecticut. There's a lot of people who live in this area and there's cell phone towers everywhere, but the coverage is still not good for some reason. And I think it's ever since they decommissioned the 3G towers, it's really spotty. I'm excited to see how this is gonna look and more importantly, how it's gonna sound. I think this is gonna be a big step up. Since wireless connection is a concern of mine, I decided to power cycle it a few times and see how quickly and consistently my phone connected. All right, let's see how fast this loads up. I'm gonna flip the switch. Thank you. 
thing. This is what I'm worried about. Come on. No, it's in kind. Why? Alright, I'm going to try that again. Turning on. Does my phone have to be unlocked? Maybe it's gotta be unlocked. That was pretty quick. Thank you so much for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this content, please give me that thumbs up and hit subscribe and I will see you all next time.